Generally, after the intake, the client will want to focus immediately on their problem, like, I'm having these headaches, can you help me? But I tend to work in a more holistic fashion. I don't focus on only the symptoms. I really want to get a more complete picture of what is going on. And this takes a bit of time, so it is not always uh, possible, like if you're sitting on a paranormal fair, a person is just sitting on the table next to you, you will never see them again probably, well then there's no time for a big intake. But if the person is there for a process which will take multiple sessions, then it's good to invest some time in uh, getting to know your client. So one of the things I really want to know is my client's story, their past, where are they coming from, what happened to them. And um, usually the way their stories are told are about highlights and you need to more or less connect these highlights to get a more complete picture of yeah, what really the situation was. Because people don't think chronologically, people think associatively. Um, so often the conversation will go a little bit uh, um, like this. So, do you have any siblings, any brothers or sisters? And when you were growing up, did you have animals around the house? Any pets? And your parents, they're together or they're divorced? Then I will also ask more in-depth questions. So, how is your relation with your brother, sister, uh, and what happened to your dog, cat, rabbit, and also finding out a little bit about the situation of their parents. So, what did your father do? What did your mother do? Um, what were they like as a parent? Were they caring? Were they strict? Um, were they supportive? Were they abusive? And sometimes it's also necessary to go a little bit more into the wider social range. So, um, how about aunts and uncles? Did you have cousins you play with? Did you have best friends? How was the how were things at school? Did you have a good relationship with the teachers? Were you bullied or teased? Were you one of the popular kids? So this gives you a little bit of a view of um, their early experiences. Because often these early experiences give a kind of a, a framework. How they will see things, how they will approach life. It forms kind of a reality filter because everything is compared to the earlier experiences and everything is better or worse or difficult or easy compared to early life. So it also gives you an opportunity to look at potential points where the uh, development might have been hampered. So as you know from some previous videos, the chakras develop more or less chronologically and if you find that in a certain period there, there was a lot of stress and disruption in that person's life, it's very likely that the associated chakra also won't have developed completely. Once you've looked at the childhood, I tend to also look at the adolescence. So, did you do any drugs, drinking, alcohol, smoking? And how about relationships, boyfriends, girlfriends? Did you fall in love a lot or not at all? And how were your sexual relationships? Were you comfortable with that? Did it go more or less as you expected? Or do you have some regrets about it? What does intimacy and sex mean to you now? 
and currently? Are you married? Are you in a relationship? Do you have any children? Do you have any pets? Oh, so how did you and your partner meet? What are your hobbies? What made you decide to come to me? So questions like this slowly bring the yeah, focus into the now. And it also gives, starts giving you a little bit of a view of the current situation they're in. And how that situation developed. Next video I will go a little bit more into looking at the current situation and analyzing that. But often it's very important to know more or less what the history of the current situation is. Because when they tell you that, for instance, they got into a relationship because they liked a specific something about that, and often the nature of the relationship will change and this might be a problem. This might be the cause of lots of stress or disappointment or um, irritations which are going on. Same also with complexities of life, children, animals. Often people will have either a plan for them or they don't have a plan for them. And when things don't go according to plan, people tend to get a little bit upstressed or stressed. And even though that on a conscious level they may, might be quite okay with it, on a subconscious level this disruption of their patterns can cause lots of yeah, problems. So, once you have a little bit of a view of what is the basic attitude of the person and how did they arrive in their current situation and how do they feel about the factors of the current situation, time is right to start really focusing on the now. And I'll discuss that in the next video.